I grew up, that's all we ate was fish every day. We never got tired of it. A lot of the kids, you know, they won't eat fish. And I think it's important for them to keep on using our own food, you know, like fish and deer meat and berries. Oh my God, I wish you could smell this. Horn am the dem gubbin, the will you get him. I said fish is good to eat to keep you healthy. Hi, I'm Melody Leesk. I am from Matlakatla, Alaska. I'm a Simshian native. This beautiful young lady standing next to me is Naomi Leesk. And our other little gem is Sierra, Miss Sierra. You will always find Miss Sierra on Naomi's back when she's out there harvesting the different berries, pulling bark, and the list goes on. This one's blueberries, or a blue huckleberry, or Somali word for it is semai. So these are also good for fruit lily because they dry nice, nice and pliable. These guys have a couple different names. Watermelon berries or twisted stock, but our name for it is uh, Mayagum Leap Leap. Translates to thunderberries because of the lightning shaped stock. In early May, you can eat the greens just like in a salad. Well, they're ripe now, and traditionally, we didn't really have a way to preserve them because they're they're really high water content. You just you just eat them, but there's lots of seeds. So I mean, nowadays you can make jelly with them. No. And she just wants to eat them. <laughs> but there's a lot of uh, I think misconception about this plant here. Because when it first comes out of the ground, when it's just shoots, when the leaves just come out, it kind of resembles a false hellbor, which is poisonous. Um, but this one's safe to eat. There's only like a period of a week or so when they resemble each other, when they look similar. Yeah, these here I have a couple different names, but our, our traditional name for it is kupkop. Uh, they're called bunch berries, frog berries, dwarf dogwood berries, and sweet. And it kind of, it's a binding agent for the berry cakes because that soft marshmallowy stuff in the side, it's kind of like a binding agent. It would help keep the berry cakes together. But it's good for fruit leather also. These, uh, we call them laughing berries here, but they're salau where our traditional name for them is Jawash. So these ones are ripe. These ones almost, and these ones, no. Another week, two weeks. These are huckleberries, or our name for them is Wafleix. These ones are really good for making fruit leather because when they dry out, they're nice and pliable still. Whereas salmon berries are really high water content, so those, those don't dry very nicely. Same as thimble berries, these kind of get crumbly. We did pass uh, some salmon berries. The salmon berry shoots, you can eat those um, usually early May too when everything starts to sprout. The salmon berry shoots, were, um, you just eat them, eat them raw, or you can even saute them or steam them, um, or put them in some gouty olecan grease. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Naomi and she's gonna go over the different berries that we're going to be using for our berry fruit roll up. So here we have all the berries that we picked earlier. Here's the laughing berry, the blueberry, huckleberry for sweetness, and then the bunch berry is like a binding agent or a thickener to hold the fruit leather or the berry cakes together. All we do uh, from here is just dump it in a food processor or a blender. At this point, you could add lemon juice uh, to keep the brightness. You could also strain it to get those seeds out, but the seeds don't bug me at all. And that's it. Then you just throw it in the oven at the lowest possible temperature. 
uh, for about seven hours.